Howdy all, you asked for it so you got it. We're here at the top of the world at the Eisenhower Tunnel and as always I am here with our local truck expert Mr. Truck Kent. Yes. And today Kent, what do we got behind us? This F-150, the new aluminum body F-150. That's right, with the 2.7 liter twin turbo. It's a tiny little engine but this truck was the fastest truck we've ever tested from 0 to 60. So the question is, will it tow? Yes. Will this, this thing be a whole new era in the world of trekking? It's going to either be a beer can or it's going to be a fighter jet. So we're going to find that out coming up right now on the Fast Lane Truck. What's the best towing truck in the land? That is a really simple question and one that we're going to answer at the first annual TFL Truck Gold Hitch Awards. That's right. Coming in April, we're going to find out which of the trucks in four classes, yes, light duty, heavy duty, and midsize, and of course, large SUV, can tow the best. So other channels may have most fun cars, may have some kind of engineering thing. Not here. We're going to find out what's the best towing truck in the land, and that is coming up on April 8th. It's going to be called the TFL Truck Gold Hitch Award. And guess what? We're going to live stream it so you can find out when we find out. Whoa! Oh, all right, get real that grumble. These guys are trying to pass me and there's no two lanes. I guess we'll see which one hits the barrier first. Oh, why do cars do that? I Come don't, on, I don't. That, I have no oh. respect for trucks with trailers. Oh my gosh, that was so dangerous. Look, he almost got pancake by yeah, the semi and exactly. us. Exactly, that was ridiculous. Oh. Well, as you can tell, we're starting another run up the I Gauntlet, and uh, you know what? I got the stopwatch going, and I think the stopwatch is going to be pretty much irrelevant, Ken, because yeah. this thing has so much power, we're already exceeding the speed limit, and we don't want to do that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got to look excited about it. Well, I was, I was excited about that rumble from the V6. It growls a little. <laughs> it does growl. That is just... Uh, an interesting sound it makes, um, but it is not, it is not, I will repeat, a V8 grumble, which is, I think, one of the things, a rumble, which is one of the things that people are going to miss. Yeah, that's probably the only thing they're going to miss, because I think this is going to be an engine that will kick butt with a lot of V8s in this class, in this half-ton class. What Kent so eloquently is pointing out with his aluminum versus jet fighter analogy is that the new F-150 is aluminum. See? Magnet. Nothing. That means it's 700 pounds less than the outgoing model. It also means that it should tow. I yeah. Mean, look, this yeah. thing is, is a, it's exciting truck and you know that iron graphite just like the diesels, it's, it looks like a long life engine. Twin turbos, what else can you want out of this other than the sound? But this truck, you know, could be could be the future for the half ton class. This could be what we're going to see. Well, you know, Ford is betting that aluminum and turbocharging is the future, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Nissan and uh, Ram are betting that diesel is the future. Yep, that's where they've got their money. And then, you know, of course, Ram and, and GM also do that uh, cylinder deactivation down to V Ford. So, so Ford doesn't want to touch that. So. so they're betting that it's new technology. And I think, you know, it's probably going to be all of that. Which one will win out? It's too early, but That's we're right. in a really good war right now. Yeah, and, and I am. I'm impressed with this little varmint. This little baby engine, the 2.7, is just a, it's, it's a giant killer is what it is. And it's it's exciting to drive, you know, and I, I've always disagreed with Ford's argument about we don't need the Ranger. We'll build a half ton that people will buy like they would a little truck. And, a, you know, this is a super cab with a six and a half foot bed, so it's very usable. A super cab is a little different. you got to slam the doors to make sure they seal upright. Guys, under the hood is the smallest displacement engine you can get in a full-size truck. It's a 2.7 liter twin turbo EcoBoost that puts out 325 horsepower and 375 pound-foot of torque. It's mated to a six-speed automatic transmission and the government says that this truck gets a combined 20 mpg. But uh, so let me know. explain what that is. A super cap, every manufacturer calls their 
cab configuration something different. So super right. cab and Ford speak are the clamshells door that open like this. Right. They stay in the cab with everybody else. Yeah. And, and, and the crew cab is the one that has the four doors. Yeah. Now, that also makes this a better towing truck because it makes it lighter. Right. This is lighter. This has a 7,600-pound towing capacity, which is pretty interesting. And when we came down the hill, this grade shift is fantastic. I mean, it went from fifth gear clear down to second and held me about 5,000 RPM. I didn't have to touch the brakes. I was impressed with the grade shifting on it in tow mode. Yeah, it did really well. I'm not too impressed by the uh, built-in brake controller. I think it's kind of too far out of the way. I like the fact that it's big and fat, but I hate the fact that it's way down there. Well, it didn't, what they, they came out with these in 2005, and they've always put them on the right side, which I'll give them a lot of kudos for that. But you're right. This one here, you have to take your eye off the road just to look at it, and that's not right. You never want to take your eye off the peripheral vision of what you're what you're driving through. So it needs moved up. It needs something to change. It was up higher. Ram's got theirs in the right spot. GM does it over on the left side. Now, Kent, normally when we do these Ike Gauntlet videos, we do a full review, but we've already reviewed this. So the real question today is, can this six cylinder, 2.7 liter engine compare to the other V8s that we've tested? A V8, we're comparing a six to a V8. The one in the Tundra, the one in the Ram, all the big boys. Are we struggling? It looks like you're- Oh uh, no, wait, uh, wait, how fast do you mean to go? Speed limit, 60. Just, well, well, shoot, then I, I can't get a wide open throttle. I mean, this, this truck is just idling along here. So wide open throttle will exceed the speed limit. Is yes, that what you're saying? that's what I'm saying. I'm saying I can't go wide open throttle. And we are towing about 7,200 pounds, which is a, you know, with payload of us, our heavy duty bodies and that Bronco in the I like back. That heavy duty body. Yeah, we're 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 right at the maximum That's what she capacity. Said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know, this is doing very well at this kind of a hill, this seven percent grade up in the high country. So let's uh, let's talk about some of the numbers here. We're towing seventy six hundred, as you mentioned. Well, that's that's a maximum tow. Right. We're towing about seventy two. Right. Um, our gross combined weight twelve thousand seven hundred. Okay. Um, we have uh, a 355 rear axle ratio. Yes, that's a good ratio. And we're guessing here, we're just guessing at uh, the cost of this truck, about 47. It's a pre-production model. So okay. we kind of went online, inspected out the way this is, and it's about 47, but that is a guess, guys, because we don't have a real number on a pre-production model. Yeah. Now again, we've got this trailer set up right with the weight distributing hitch from Anderson. And this, about 7,200 pounds with the Bronco and the new trailer, new test trailer. Uh, when we tested those V8s, we had the Lincoln on our old car trailer, and it weighed about 7120. So we're very similar, so we're keeping everything as close to apples to apples as we can with this new trailer. Now this engine to me sounds strong right about this RPM. It sounds good. I mean, I mean, it's actually got a little bit of throat to it. It's not a V8, it doesn't sound like a V8, but it does have some good throat in mid, mid RPM range. Now we have, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, I don't know, a six speed transmission, which is kind of becoming the dinosaur in this class, right? Yes. People are moving up, Ram is moving up, GM is moving up to the eight speed, and Ford has announced at the Detroit Auto Show that the Raptor is coming out with the 10 speed. So yes. they're going to they're going to also jump on the on the more gear better bandwagon and I suspect that once the Raptor come out comes out uh, this truck will also be at a 10 speed. I think so. I, and that's that may uh, you know I think that was a mistake on their part not to at least put an 8 speed in this model to try to get that fuel mileage jump that they wanted yeah. that they thought we would get and we didn't quite get there. That's a that's a great point because according to the EPA it's rated at 18 um, in the city, 23 on the highway, and 20 combined, which, you know, this was supposed to be their most fuel efficient model. Yes. And yet it's still more than several miles per gallon less than the Eco Diesel in the Ram. This truck has a 355 axle ratio in this new Ford F 150. And it's rated to tow 7,600 pounds. So we're very close to what the maximum capacity of this truck is. We'll see how that works at the maximum capacity up the Gauntlet where there's no air.
Yeah, yeah, and that's, I would like to drive this next, you know, right one right after the other with that 3.5, because this almost feels peppier than, than the 3.5, and I love the 3.5, but this is just so much snap, and look at this, I, I have a hard time staying on the speed limit. <laughs> you know, it's like a, it's like a horse that's straining yeah, at the... Yeah, yeah, you're pulling the reins back as hard as you can, <laughs> and this rascal doesn't like putting along here. Well, here's, you know, we have a little uh, cheat. When we come up and over the hill, uh, we have to kind of go up a very steep part right before we get into the Eisenhower Tunnel, and when Ken floored this, because we're going very slowly enough to catch up to traffic this thing actually spun its wheels yeah it's amazing when you're, <laughs> you're loaded and you're spinning your wheels that's uh, i've seen that with like, this truck in particular that they need to do a little different with traction control because you lose a little speed momentum when you're sitting there spinning your tires but it's fun yeah it's fun to do yeah i mean think about that we're pulling over seven thousand pounds and the truck is spinning its wheels yeah. at um, whatever we had, 10 or 11,000. Keep in mind, guys, this is an extreme test of a truck's ability. So we are always at the extremes here. We're going from about 9,000 to just over 11,000 feet. That means that we're losing, by the top, 30% uh, less air density, 30% less power. And the one thing the turbos do is just they cram more air into the cylinders. They make up for that. Yeah. So, Turbos still suffer at extreme elevations, but not as much as naturally aspirated engines. So, now that we have unhitched, let's see what the uh, number is here. Just a little bit under 39 inches. So, we squatted two inches, which is about normal for a pickup truck. Yeah, two inches. That's what she said. Very true. And this, you know, that they're spooled up. One's a little smaller than the other turbo. They're on each bank, and they are holding the RPMs right there. Anytime I touch it, I've got power. I love this. This is... Uh, Done well. I mean, you know, they're, they're mapping the transmission feels good, even if it's a six speed. Everything takes off well. The axle ratio at 355, I think, helps with uh, grade shifting because your RPMs are naturally higher than they are if you got a car ratio. Like some of these vehicles, you lose grade shifting because your RPMs aren't really need to be to actually give you some uh, back pressure and the engine braking. Now we're coming up to the steepest part right now, which is the end, and the end are the stoplights of the Ike Gauntlet. And I gotta tell you, this time is fantastic. It really doesn't matter because we could have exceeded it and we're yeah. not going to blow through the speed limit on this uh, run it's dangerous but we could have easily done so so i will give you a time but in some ways it doesn't matter because uh we're stuck behind this jeep yeah. and because we could have gone much faster than the speed limit sure but nevertheless we'll get a we'll get an official time on this uh truck and you know what uh it's just incredible it, it really is just incredible how fast we flew up that hill it seemed to go like that all right here we go uh stop right there check it out guys Read them and weep. 738.17. That's amazing. And I could have I could have gone 75 all the way up the hill. Oh, I bet uh, you, not, could. you probably could have gone faster. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's all there. It's just, it, it feels like a sport truck, you know? Yeah, yeah. And here's something else that's kind of cool. Let me show you something you don't often see in a pickup truck. Actually, you've never seen a pickup truck. Look at that. You know what that is? That is not the spare key. <laughs> that is the key. Because, what does this truck have, Kent? Oh, the push button start. Yeah, we got push button start. Yes. Ram you know, has that, too. Yeah, Ram has that too. Ram has the push button start on their top line models and they have the uh, hockey puck uh, transmission switch. As always, this is Roman and Mr. Truck saying check out tfltruck.com for more news, views, and Ike Alt reviews. Made in Colorado. Hell yeah, made in Colorado. See you next time. Ciao. They finally go went the other way. This actually has short leaf springs in the last year's model, which should help with the squat. Even though this looks like it squatted quite a bit, we'll find out when we get the other measurement. Oh, I was just saying that that actually, and that's one of the reasons why this spins the tires, because you have less flexing of that leaf spring. Those longer leaf springs actually will torque, like axle wrapping it's called and they'll actually let loose of the wheels. And this one is actually a tighter suspension. You would think you would have a better traction system, but it, it should help in a lot of the handling characteristics. We'll see if that's a trend when they keep getting short. This also has the staggered shocks, which I think this is the first year for these, for the staggered shocks. We're gonna see how much this truck squatted with this trailer on here. We're at maximum capacity, so this tells you a lot. And right now we're sitting about 37 inches.